What's up guys? Mark Fleetwood here. Welcome back to the Daily Grind Trader. Today I'm going to bring you part two of the technical analysis for beginners or beginner's guide to technical analysis. I screwed up my own title. This is how bad I am at this. It's going to be all about the MACD. So stay tuned. We got a lot to go over. All right, guys, let's get the disclaimer out of the way first. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. All right, guys, the MACD is this graph here. The colors may not be what you see, but I changed mine to be more vibrant and be more easily distinguished from the background and from each other. On your technical indicators, if you're trading Binance, your screen will look very similar to this. It is a technical indicator. Obviously, it's the point of making a technical analysis, technical indicator um, tutorial. And I just blew right past MACD. So we have MACD here. You would click on that, and it brings this up. There are three parts to a MACD. The MACD line. My MACD line is in blue. The MACD line is derivative of the 12-day exponential moving average minus the 26 day exponential moving average. I can show you that on the graph really quickly. I'm gonna take my regular moving averages off and I'm gonna do a double EMA. So exponential moving average is EMA. I'm just gonna keep it, um, just say EMA from this point on just so it's, we're clear. Uh, EMA cross, okay. So this is uh, stock at 9 and 26. I want to change this to 12 and 26 and make the lines thicker. Okay, so these are 12 and 26. We can see here that at this point, this would be one of our lower points. <clears throat> we have the 12 is at 33,135, uh, it shows up here in this corner. So 12 is at 33,094 here at this point. And the 26 is at 32,823. So you subtract those two, it should be roughly 275, I think. But go down and look at that point, two, 280. So that is your MACD line. Your MACD is the difference between these two lines. If you were to put an, e, an, an EMA of 12 and an EMA of 26 on your graph, the difference between the two and then is where you're going to be on your MACD. So as these two gap farther away, this difference is going to be roughly 5,000, 51, 46 to 51. And then boom, we have 5,207. Again, so the farther these separate, again, think of it just like the regular moving averages. The farther you separate from each other, the more it wants to pull, the more it wants to pull back. Think about the 7 and 25 day moving averages I'm going to put back on here. I'm going to go back to the standard moving averages that I keep on every one of my graphs. So do that twice. And I'm going to change the colors and we'll get right back to it. But like the, uh, like the initial video, the moving averages, when your price gets too far away from your moving averages, it wants to come back. Be it too far up or too far down, it doesn't matter. It wants to come back. Okay, these are bright and distinguished from each other enough. Again, as, as these get to the top, you notice that this gap is here at its max and it starts to fall back down. You cross down at this point. This is your down cross on your MACD. When your MACD crosses down, that means you are in selling pressure. Selling pressure is picking up. And you see here, this is the max selling pressure. And you can identify 
the seven 25 day cross that I was looking at to predict this upswing from the last one, seven 25 day cross signals signal the end of the selling pressure or not the end of the selling pressure, but it had reached its maximum. And now we're getting buying pressure to start ticking away at these down on the histogram here. I apologize. I, I kind of jumped ahead of myself. These these candles is called the histogram. The histogram um, is the MACD line minus the signal line, and it shows essentially it shows the pressure or the strength of the market. How far positive it is is the strength strong buy. How far down it is a strong sell. Strength of the market in either direction. So at this point, it hit its strongest point and it was starting to weaken. So you go, you start weakening, you see the buy pressure pick up. And you see it really start to weaken and then it flips. Across here is on par or it's on in line with the cross of the seven day back above the 25 day to show the full kind of the boom of the uptrend. Now this uptrend is going to go big and it did. And you have the same thing here, your seven day cross the 25 day and you reach the peak of the cell pressure. Now this one, it stayed sideways. The pressure stayed about the same. The price action stayed sideways here for a little bit, but the cell here in the bottom never got stronger. It never, it never got deeper. And then the seven and 25 day cross seven cross back above the 25 day. And that's where you hit your zero point here. You hit what I'll call equilibrium. And now you're back on the upswing. You you had the MACD cross the signal line, and now you're back on the upswing. So these are how they correlate it. Now, how do you use how do you use this tool? You can use it in, in a couple of different ways. A couple of different ways I want to talk about. There's two two ways that I like to use it. I like to use it predictively um, because if you see strength here, you're, you're too late. You're going to be too late. Odds are that by the time you get to this type of strength, it's going to start being in a sell. It's going to very quickly be in a sell off and you're, you're not likely to, to gain much profit. I need to use it predictively as I see it coming down and I start to see it flatten out. I'm looking for the bottom of this. I'm looking for, I'm looking for the bottom of the MACD to start to flatten out. Now this one was interesting because it took a little bit longer to flatten out. But if I make a line, if I make a support line, it held the support the whole way. It held, it held this depth of the MACD. It held its support until it started to turn back up. Once the pressure relinquished, the buying pressure took over and that's how this takes over here. So again, I like to use this as a predictive tool. You can, you can, you can get burned on this. This is not a guarantee. There is no guarantee that this thing will not turn up like this and then just run parallel and lose pressure altogether and lose volume. And you'll see these little runs here. This is a sign of a low volatility time. And this is how you would use it for breakout trading. Now I want to go back way back. The reason why I'm on Binance.com instead of Binance.us being from the US, I have to trade on Binance.us. However, it doesn't go and show the full lifetime of, of, uh, of the cryptos because it's, not been around long enough, I guess. It's weird it doesn't show the whole time frame to me, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Right, I'm going to zoom this in. Sorry, it's taking me a while. But I want to make sure I get this right for you guys. So 
So back at the Okay. Now we're back at the 2017 2018 downtrend. So we're looking at 2018 coming down. Yeah, we're coming down off that first all time high around 20K. Now I set this line here because this was a strong support level. I mean, this thing hit support here at, at 6,000. I honestly, I never thought this would break. I never thought the support would break. I never thought we'd break below it. But you see, as the MACD flattens out, as this flattens out and flattens out and flattens out until you can almost not see anything at all. You can't even tell that it's crossing back and forth over each other. The more this MACD flattens out and you get these flat lines of almost no change. This is an indicator of a breakout coming. This is a breakout trade waiting to happen. Unfortunately, this one broke down, broke down and hit the next level of support at 3000. And you see, it's trading very flat again, very flat on the MACD. Another breakout's coming. It popped up. You see, it had strong buy pressure, and then it started getting flat again because the sell never matched the height of the buy. So even though it came up here and there was some sell pressure, it never really broke down again, never broke low. And it ran flat. And again, this is, this is a whole month of running flat after this, after this buy up. It ran flat and then boom, big breakout. And every time you see this big breakout, if you notice at this point, the cell never really picked up and it ran flat for a week or two and then dropped and made this little, this little cradle here and then big breakout again, big breakout. Now this doesn't look like as much but this was from 7,500 up to 14, almost 14,000. This was almost a 100% increase. So that's that big, massive, you know, massive buy pressure here. The big swing. If you caught that here at the MACD cross, I'm going to go online here. MACD cross was at 81.65. I'm gonna give or take a couple of bucks. You know, don't quote me on the exact number that it crossed. 81.91. Let's call it 8200. We'll call it 8200. Error on the high side. 8200 up to a peak of 13.950. That's a hell of a profit. That is a hell of a profit to take. And if you trade the cross or if you trade the hook, and I'm going to call this the hook because it's when the MACD turns, it doesn't have to cross the signal, but just when it turns, then you can take profit from 75, 77 up to that number. Again, guys, this video is starting to get a little long, starting to get a little wordy. I hope it's not unbearably hard to watch. The MACD is an extremely valuable tool used in conjunction with other tools. By itself, it can lead you to making mistakes and it can lead you to seeing things that aren't really there. I was hoping to see a cross. Okay, here's, here's a good one. It's gonna be more the MACD than anything else. So the MACD line cross up but it just ran flat. It ran sideways. It was a false break. And that's this little area here of consolidation. I already had this marked off because I wanted to show you this. If I go back and zoom it back into normal size, like you would normally have your MACD, there's almost nothing there. You almost can't see the, the histogram at all. Now, the same size at the end, you see the histogram at full size. Here, 
there is nothing. But you can see, if you take this, if you take this really low volume, this really low pressure from by your cell, and you take it and map it out, and you see that you came in from the bottom, and you make this little wedge, and this volume gets condensed, and you get this consolidation and condensing of price, and it's not going up high, it's not going down low, the lowers keep getting higher, and the higher's keep getting lower. Typically, and I'm gonna say typically as in 60-40 winner, 60-40, you're gonna win. If you come into this from the bottom, you exit from the top. That's a general rule of thumb. These type of consolidations are not super high probability, 60-40, best case scenario. But you come in from the bottom, you trade sideways, you consolidate, you consolidate, and you exit from the top. You see the pressure, just a little bit of a buy pressure on the histogram. But it's enough. You see here, you see another consolidation. And this one would have been the opposite because we bought, you know, we entered this consolidation. We went down and entered from the, from the top and we should have probably broke down, but it broke up. So again, no indicator is foolproof. Nothing is foolproof, but the MACD is a great indicator of where things could be going. And right now, I'm looking at this and thinking to myself, I am really liking the way this current uptrend has already started to play out. Has already bought up from the initial cross, the cross back from the 7, crossing back over the 25. It's imminent. And the MACD cross is imminent, which means we have stopped all cell pressure, all the heavy cell pressure, and are getting ready to get into buy strength. We're getting into the strength of the buy, which means we could see a histogram look like this, or we could see the MACD line shoot up like this, the histogram shoot up like this, and we could see this type of buy pressure through here, and that's how we hit $70,000. That's how we hit my April 15th price, price prediction. And we'd be looking at April 15th here. And $70,000 $70, here. Easy, easy peasy. All right, guys, that's the video for the day. I, I hope I was able to bring some clarity to the MACD and how it was used. Um, I feel like I was rambling a lot. I feel like there was a lot of information to try to keep it in a video that was short enough to, to make it bite-sized and digestible. Guys, again, let me know. Comment. Let me know if it's worth me to continue doing these tutorial-style videos. Uh, the last one didn't get a whole lot of views. Um, I'm hoping it's because my mic sucked and it was hard to hear, and this one's better, and this one has a better... Um, better information so until next time stay tuned peace